When it comes to taking a look at this roster, I think maybe the expansion sides, right, are probably the, going to be the most difficult teams for us to sort of say, this is who's going to be in the starting 11 come uh, opening day. But are there any players out here uh, that you're looking at in terms of this this young prospect that has to make an impact quickly with this Angel City side? For me, it's it's Mary Alice Vignola, who is a MA. She goes by um, – this is a player that Angel City went after. She was the second official signing of a player after Kristen Press for this Angel City squad. She went to Tennessee. Uh, she spent the last two years playing in Iceland overseas, and she's a defender. And in Iceland, um, yeah, she had eight goals in 30 games as a defender. She ended up winning the league with her most recently with her team in Iceland. So she's a player that has a lot of pedigree at the international level and playing overseas. Now as a defender coming in, it's it's going to be difficult for her to kind of crack into that starting lineup, but I think she can do it because she is a player that Freya Coombe had her eyes on and, and wanted to bring over. Um, but it is her first year in the NWSL, so there's going to be a bit of a learning curve. Can she lean on center back partners like – Sarah Gordon, Paige Nielsen, Allie Riley also on this squad that can teach her a lot heading into this 2022 season. So this is a player that Angel City made a lot of noise about, and I'm excited to watch and, and see how she makes her mark in this club and in the league for the very first time. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm very, very excited to sort of see uh, a player like Vinola get in the mix. I mentioned Katie Cousins. I would probably maybe yeah. put them together, right, as as two players to, that we're excited to sort of see take their uh, next step in their professional careers and doing it in NWSL. And then we talked a little bit about across how each line there's even experienced players uh, on this on this roster. And I think in terms of uh, a player that perhaps this club can lean on or look to in terms of leadership on and off the pitch, uh, someone who'll be able to maybe impact a game when you need it the most. Uh, I'm still looking at that forward line. I'm looking at a combination of, of Kristen Press and Jasmine Spencer. I think these are two forwards who have had outstanding careers when you look at them in their own respective senses. And I think when it comes to building something up, right, being able to sort of be there at the beginning stages of something. Both of these players have a little bit of that experience, whether it was somebody like a Kristen Press trying to have her role be what it was in Chicago, trying to be this go-to person, you know, on the pitch for, for players around her who were much younger than her already being young at that time. Right. I think it was very, very huge. She was forced to be a leader very, very, very early on. And somebody like a Jasmine Spencer who has got, who has had the experience of having to go to a team and kind of having to start over. Right. And kind of having to quickly find your way and find your place in a club and amongst its culture. Uh, I think these are two players that they'll absolutely be relied on for their experience moving forward. In terms of an international spotlight for this club, gosh, there's there's many, right? We talked about several uh, already. Uh, and I know that uh, in light of a World Cup qualifying year, we're likely going to see somebody like Kristen Press get back in the mix with that national team yeah. with the 2023 world cup right around the corner. And uh, I'm sure others are going to be looking uh, at her performances uh, as well. I think you have to look at that because Kristen press hasn't played in a really long time. Um, and so now that she has a club team that she has a lot of pride in, in angel city and, and being in LA, uh, she's definitely someone to watch that will break her way back into the United States international pool uh, with head coach last black Wendonofsky. Um, I think you have to look at that, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of international players on this squad. Vanessa Gies, um, they just different players that can combine and do a lot of different things, but Ali Riley with New Zealand, um, just it's something to keep an eye on something to keep an eye on. I think that international level, they're going to be watching expansion clubs like angel city to see what players can do, what kind of leadership they can provide at this club level for an expansion club, and then seeing how that could translate to the international level. Uh, but this is a big year for angel city and for the two expansion clubs in the NWSL. I 
I don't know if they're going to be able to live up to all of the hype maybe that's yeah. coming with it. Sandra, what are you thinking? There's a lot of it, right? I think when you yeah. kind of come in the way that Angel City came into the fold, you're placing a lot of expectation, yeah, on yourselves, but uh, quite frankly on uh, supporters that you're asking to to ride with you, right, throughout this, this journey. And that ultimately, I think, leads us to our biggest burning question for Angel City entering the 2022 season. Can they break the cycle? An expansion club has not come into NWSL and gone directly to the playoffs in their first year. Can they break that expansion team cycle? I don't know. What do we have for the projected finish? We said earlier at the top of this segment, Lisa, we did an attacking third power rankings episode I during know. the offseason before this club made any moves and any huge additions before they did their expansion draft. And we had them at seventh on the table of a 12 club standings. Is it changing for you at all? I mean, there's a lot of pressure on Angel City, I think, to break into the playoffs. Um, I, I don't know where they're going to finish. We've never yeah. seen them play before. We don't know how it's going to work out. We don't know if uh, what's going to happen with their kits, what's going to happen on the pitch, how they're going to play against opponents, the type of style. I mean, we have a little bit of an insight into what Freya Coombe wants to do because she was with Gotham, formerly Sky Blue, um, and we know how she liked to play there. But she also has a very, very different pool of players at Angel City. And when you have a player like Kristen Press that you're looking to build your attack around, it changes how you're going at things. You don't have players that Freya Coombe had at Gotham, like Midge Purse, if you Amanu, Carly Lloyd, even. So that changes what's going to happen. Can Angel City be the team, the expansion club to break that cycle of, of not making it into the playoffs? Honestly, yes, I could see that happening for a club like Angel City, just based on the pedigree of players that they've already established on their roster. However, I, I don't know. I mean, right, it's going to take some time to see what, what they kind of roll out with. Do you think they make the playoffs? Listen, it's tough here. Yeah. It's tough here. And that's I say that as a compliment. It's tough out here in NWSL. It's something that this league prides itself on even we saw even in an expanded playoff format for the first time where there are now six teams that can make the nwsl postseason that it took until the final week of games to settle out what the table was going to look like i'm gonna stay with that range that we stood in december because i want to come back here and be proven wrong. I want to talk about something magical and I hope it happens uh, because it would be a, a first. We love to talk about first here, yeah. uh, second, third, but for now with everything in sight, I'm going to stay with a lower table finish for this team. I mean, it's, it's almost a win if they don't get 11th or 12th place, right? You know what? Honestly, that is true. For a very long time, there was a similar narrative maybe around Houston Dash where it was like, well, we guess that their best season was their first season where they almost made the playoffs, question mark, right? This was back when it was just top four teams. And maybe that could be a, a similar energy. If they don't finish 11th or 12th, is that going to be viewed as a successful season? I guess it just depends on how uh, people define success for themselves personally. Mm -hmm. But we'll be paying attention to it. We would love to see a shocking season from one of the expansion sides angel city we're waiting for you 